All right, today I want to bring you guys a build. This is the Viking. It is a Class B medium sized hauler. It's not too big, it's not meant to hold a ridiculous amount of cargo. A lot of attention has been paid to the inside and definitely the outside. I spent a lot of time rebuilding this thing to get it right. It was originally supposed to be an ugly hauler ship, but I think it actually turned out looking good. I did get in one fight on the way over here, and it was... I'll use it in the video. It was kind of uh, over before it started. So, the Viking Class B medium hauler, it only uses one kind of weapon which I probably showed a clip from a fight scene I got in on the way over here. And I will show you the weapons in closer detail when we go into build mode. First, I'll show you around the ship and things like that, but then we'll take the whole ship apart and I'll show you how to build it if you want to or just want to use it as inspiration as careful attention was paid to the hub modules and they connect in a really good way that emphasizes aesthetics and flow. And I'll show you how I did that. So the weapons, it only has particle beams. It has one EM weapon, but only particle beams because I figure they damage hull and shield, so really, practically, you don't need anything else. So it has, the way I did it was, three particle beams on, you know, hotkey to the right trigger, and then the left trigger is just EM weapon, if you want to disable a ship. So the fight that I was in, I was just holding down the right trigger, it's all you have to do, it's the only button it has, and it works out pretty well. Also, because it just has just those power bars in weapons, um, it can run with the reactor it has, it can run with all its points spent. You never have to redistribute points with this thing, so that's cool. Alright, so you've seen it here. Let's have a look outside and in. And luckily, we landed here on this planet on a nice day. Although, uh, oh, is that a ship? Well, I'll have to investigate that. Alright, so now we're on a different planet. What happened was, I, I landed there to show you guys the ship, and then another ship landed. So I went to go check it out, and... Um, it ended up they saw me right as I boarded it and I was just gonna claim the ship and run back to the Vikings so I could show you this one <laughs> But as I was boarded on the ship, they actually took off while I was boarded Which um, so then I killed them claimed the ship, but then it I was already off the planet So I couldn't retrieve <laughs> this ship So then I had to land somewhere else swap ships and come here. So that was kind of a mess So here is the Viking from the outside and uh, I wanted to get it in a nice sunny day, which it was on the other planet, but, uh, yeah. So, the idea here was, well, it's kind of a little bit inspired by the idea of, like, a cargo ship. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about here. A little bit inspired, as in, I built a ship previously, and that'd be right here. Now, this right here is what happens when, see, here I was imitating the, the concept. This was one of the first ships I built. I was imitating the idea of a cargo ship, um, which, I mean, okay, but here, more loosely based, because here I just kind of went by the inspiration. Instead of just trying to literally copy something in the real world, I just went with the inspiration and got a much more eh, spaceship-looking uh, craft, which we have here. So I'll show you the inside, and of course, when I show you the build for it, we'll start with the hab modules, and I'll explain their layout. The landing bay is front and center in the ship, and actually pretty much exactly centrally located. This allows the hab modules to come off of it like a central hub, kind of. And uh, so it's really handy. It's handy because it's front and center. It's easy to access from any place where the ship lands. You can just run right into the front of the ship. But it, uh, yeah, it takes you directly to the center of the ship. So from the, uh, so from where you come in right here in the landing bay, we can go towards the fore of the ship and here's the captain's quarters. And I'll explain how these are laid out, but the basic idea here is okay so here we're in the captain's quarters the best part of the captain's quarters is i think this end right here because you have the coffee maker you have the couches and the bathroom and everything here is like the it's like a living room so keeping this in mind when i place the modules i always want to keep the fore section of the captain's quarters not connected to anything and with no windows or anything so that it doesn't delete any of this awesome furniture down here so this is one theme that you're going to see a lot here the captain's quarters is mounted in the fore so that, you know, the only stuff back here, I don't care if we lose, but 
and that's why it has no connections to it. So going back from the captain's quarters, again with the landing bay right in the center of the ship, we have three HABs back here. We have a science lab. Right over here we have the workshop. And then this one connected down here, but that's okay. Down here we have the armory. The armory is much the same kind of philosophy as attaching the captain's quarters. The armory, it likes to cut out sections. If you have windows or doors anywhere, it likes to clear sections out of it, which oddly kind of seemed to happen here, though there's nothing connected here. It's easy for armories to lose all of their weapon racks and stuff and only have just the middle section. So I try to only connect them on one end. Here, it's kind of cleared out on the end here for some reason. We can try to replace it, but here at least we got a lot of weapon racks and we got a helmet mounts and backpack mounts and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, try to, with armories at least, I always try to have only one thing connected to armories so that you don't get stuff deleted out of them. It's really easy to only have like a third of an armory right in the center. So on the bottom deck we have the captain's quarters, the workshop, science lab, and armory. Now we go up to the second deck, which is the top deck. It's just two decks, well, plus the cockpit. And this is like, again, right in the center of the ship. So this takes us up here. And in the fore, we have the control center right here. And then aft, we have an all-in-one. And that's it for the second deck. Just the control center, the all-in-one. And then up from here, we have the cockpit. All right, so here's the view from the cockpit. All right, let's go ahead and check it out in build mode. I'll tear it apart and show you how everything is put together on this medium freight hauler. All right, so here we are in the build mode. Now it doesn't, it turns, it turned out not to have a whole lot of cosmetic pieces. I built this over a very long period of time where I kept rebuilding it. And the more I rebuilt it, the more I took off the just aesthetic cowlings and realized it looked good. It looked good in the bones that it had. It's got some, I'll take it apart here so you can see all of what makes this up. So here you can see it all apart, and the hab modules right here, and the landing bay comes up kind of central, well kind of front central in it, right right here is where the landing bay comes up, and the hab modules go forward and back from it. I wanted it central so that, yeah, one ladder would connect them all. So here's the landing bay. Now directly above the landing bay, I put a companionway. I put that first. So that's gonna guarantee that a ladder goes up there. Companionways are like ladder magnets anyway. So putting a companionway directly above it guarantees a ladder's gonna go up there. So the first deck, we have the captain's quarters in the fore, and it is a tayo, whereas everything else is demos. The reason is because, okay, here I was thinking a lot about the interior, as I mentioned earlier. The tayo is the best, in my opinion, best looking captain's quarters that would match the demos. And the reason is that um, it's kind of got the same black and white coloring inside. You know, like the Hope is really dark, the Nova is really light, the Tayo is kind of black and white. It would go with the Deimos ones. And it's got the, see the Deimos Captain's Quarters just has a cot. I didn't like that. This one has the, the bed in it, the really nice little bed in there. And it's mounted on the fore again because all the, the pretty furniture and stuff in the Captain's Quarters is in the fore section here so I didn't want to break that up so that comes off here so the only entrance is right here and it leaves the whole captain's quarters intact and then going back from there we have the science quarters the armory and the workshop and I didn't uh, I didn't worry too much about I don't worry too much about the, the science lab the workshop and the control station because I don't have those for the furniture I have those for the utility so and the utility is going to be there regardless however many windows or doors you put in them they're going to have the same stuff they have the armory is attached right here and it only has the one entrance into it to leave the maximum amount of armory in there all right and then moving up from there i mounted the control station first right here and i don't care again if a ladder goes through the control station the control stations will still be there regardless so it's mounted right here and then back from that is an all-in-one berth for the crew to sleep and stuff like that and then the cockpit mounts on top of that for the cockpit, I chose the, it's the big cockpit from Stroud Eklund, although this is not the super expensive one, this is the cheaper one of the two, um, and that's actually just because I was running low on funds, that's the only reason, otherwise I would have chosen the expensive one, but they look the same, the only difference I think is storage, it's no huge deal. All right. So there was a lot of design philosophy in the hab modules. I'm going to be doing that more going forward. In other words, starting with like a companion way off the landing bay so that 
you can set where the ladders are going to be and then work the hab modules around that. All right, let's start putting the landing gear back on. Now, you're going to want to start building this ship at Hopetown because of the big landing gear in the back. You have to get at Hopetown, so I would recommend, yeah, start building this at Hopetown. But then the cockpit comes from the Stroud Eklund headquarters in Neon, so you're going to want to go from Hopetown to Neon where you can put on the rest of the, most of the rest of the stuff. Let's go ahead and put these guys back on. All right, with the rear landing gear on, I got some Nova cowlings right here. I put along the bottom of the cockpit just to... It looks kind of nice and it follows that contour right there. This ship wasn't supposed to be pretty, but ended up having a lot of nice contours, that being one of them. One of the reasons I used the Deimos hab modules, I was pretty set on I wanted to use Deimos, except for the captain's quarters. And uh, that was kind of one reason. And then the fuel tanks, these were definitely... It has way too much fuel, yeah, but... This was kind of the look of the ship I wanted. I wanted these big industrial looking fuel tanks. You can get these from anywhere. I believe once you hit a certain level, I uh, can't say exactly. They just kind of appeared for me at some point in the ship builder. Attached to the front of the fuel tanks, we have weapons. I'll talk about the weapons uh, in a moment. For now, I just want to get them out of the way and back on the fuel tanks. I'll talk about the shield in a minute. Just get it attached back to the fuel tanks where it was. All right, so storage, we have, uh, let's see, 3390 storage. Uh, nice medium amount of storage, I think. It's not not too little, not too much. I have these, mostly these are just for looks, mounted down here, these little crate containers. I picked, uh, yeah, I wasn't even concerned about how much storage they provide. I picked the blue ones because that was the look and the color that I wanted, to be honest. They're just there for kind of looks. The main storage is right here in these guys, these two 1270 uh ones you can get well yeah storage you can get from any spaceport you're at of course i think yeah this is a decent amount of storage especially with your skill bonus with my skill bonus it puts it over 5,000 storage and it's more than enough i have these little wings here for looks these wings kind of go back these are demos wings that kind of go back into the the engines that i used so the whole ship is class b i wanted yeah, again i think i said it earlier i wanted class b i wanted it I've been building a lot of Class B ships lately. It's because I can get a more compact reactor and graph drive, and it gives me simply just more options as I'm building. So we'll talk about the engines and the reactor and such now. We're using, uh, I believe, yeah, it's the best reactor and graph drive, at least that I can find. At my level, the best reactor and graph drive I can find for Class B. The graph drive is the RD3000 beta graph drive with uh, 36 graph drop thrust, and I had that right oh it is mounted there but it can't snap just yet the reactor is the dc303 fast ignition reactor it's a 35 power reactor it's pretty powerful for class b which is great because it gives us again we have enough power to power up everything on this ship all right now we can snap that into place this little nova bracer goes up here because it's about the only option because of the way the engines mount i need i needed something that could attach these engines these are class b these are like the some of the best class b engines you can get yeah the hercules dt 160 engines i picked these because of the look they're not the best class b those would be the nova ones i guess um, but these have plenty of thrust and maneuvering thrust and they look just incredible when you fly the ship they light up really really bright they're beautiful engines and they attach right there that's why they have the nova bracer there it was the best looking part i could figure to go there and attach everything and then these go right underneath it. Same ones. I just colored them differently. Down here, we'd have two Deimos uh, belly aft, just little tail pieces to go behind the storage units right here. Um, yeah, to kind of just to purely for contour and curve. And then here I have a, uh, it's a Tayo spine. And this is their just because the only reason that's there is because of there's this blank space here and what this does just purely contour if you look at it from the side it just adds a nice little gives the bottom of the ship just a little more kind of strength kind of looks like almost like a rudder if you look at it from the side and i thought that was a good little addition right there on the front here forming the shape of the front we have two stroud nose cap c the angled one which go right in front of the four landing gear and in front of the control station, we have Stroud Nose Cap B, 
which really contributes a lot to what I think is a very handsome silhouette of the ship. And then here we have a Nova weapon mount, and mounted to that is the third particle beam weapon and our EM gun right here on the front. Decent place for it. Then we got, uh, yeah, the wings go down here. Little Deimos wings just to kind of make it prettier. And then these right here, these Nova cowlings, they help flow the contour of the ship back into to those back there. So that's the looks, that's the, well, the looks and everything that goes into the ship. Oh, and one more fuel tank here. It's because these these uh, big fuel tanks, as much as I love them, they have this big flat um, outer facing area. So I attached some stuff to it, weapons, and then I've just put this fuel tank, this little tiny, it's like the smallest fuel tank you can get. I attached it there just for looks. So there wasn't a big flat black area there. So for the weapons, I went with probably the best of the B-class particle weapons fire rate of 6 and damage of 19. I went with the faster firing version. I prefer faster firing guns because it's not as painful if you miss. They're more, you know, they're more uptime of firing. And if you miss, you just miss a couple of low damage shots. I think it has better damage uptime than a slow firing big gun because if you miss with one of those, then it's longer time before you hit again. These have more, yeah, more damage uptime. And then, yeah, I put an EM weapon on here just because there was actually, there was still three unspent points in the reactor and I figure why have unspent points. So I slapped this on here for help in disabling ships. And uh, so that's it. That's the build of the Viking and uh, quite pleased with it. it. It was a lot of work to try to kind of find the shape and the style of the ship that I wanted to get. Now, what error is this that I have? Um, unattached modules. Well, you know how to find that. Just tap this button, select all, and we see that there's something unattached back here. So there was the error. And yeah, that's how you can easily track down unattached module errors is just tap that button. Somehow those ended up, I don't know how they didn't auto snap, but there we go. All right, let's go ahead and back out of here. All right, guys, so that's the build for the Class B medium size hauler, the Viking. Tell me what you think in the comments below, any input you may have or anything like that. It's a nice, strong, it's a fairly unique looking ship, but it doesn't look out of place in the Starfield universe. I think it's, it's pretty spot on. Tell me what you think in the comments below. And uh, if you like the video, hit that like button. And be sure to follow along. Subscribe for more videos from Starfields. I do ship builds and perhaps other things. And again, leave me your input in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. There's plenty more ships that I'd like to show that I've been working on. And see what you guys think. And of course, leave your ideas below. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.